Hello, I'm Dan Alberghetti, and I'm going to walk you through the initial configuration wizard for the Endian UTM Mini firewall device. Now, I have an Endian UTM Mini firewall device right here, and I'm connected to it with my laptop, so let's start configuring it. Okay, let's go over what we're going to attempt to do in the initial configuration. Now, I have a diagram here. Here's the front of the Endian firewall device and I'm going to switch to the back of the Indian firewall device which shows all of the switch ports and this is what we're going to try to set up four different zones we're going to set up a green zone the secure side of our network for our inside network users this will be for all of the users on our local area network then we'll set up a blue zone for our wireless users that will connect to let's say a wireless access point or wireless router which will connect also to the Indian firewall device we're also going to set up an orange zone for our DMZ. This will be for any servers that we want to have publicly available from the internet, like a web server or a mail server or something like that. And then we're going to also need a red zone, which is the outside area of our network. This is the WAN side or the wide area network side. This is the side that gives us our public IP address from, let's say, our internet service provider. This is the insecure side of the network, the outside. Okay, but to get started, we're going to need to start by first connecting to the Endian firewall device so we can access the management interface. And this is done from the green zone. So what we need to do is connect by default to switch port 1, which by default is set up for the green zone. And the Endian firewall device by default is given the IP address 192.168.0. Dot 15. So, for us to connect to the Indian firewall device, we need to connect to switch port 1, which my laptop is, and we need to give ourselves an IP address on the same network as the Indian firewall device. So, what I've done is, I've got my local area connection here, and if I go to properties, and I scroll down to internet protocol version 4, and open up the properties, you can see that I've given myself the IP address 192.168.0.100 and I've made my default gateway 192.168.0.15 I've also got a 24-bit subnet mask and I've also set 192.168.0.15 as the IP address for my preferred DNS server so now I should be able to if I'm connected to switch port 1 as I am I should be able to contact the device I've got a command prompt here, and I'll run a ping command, and we'll see if we can ping the Indian firewall device. I hit enter, and you can see we're getting replies from the Indian firewall device. So this means that we're communicating with the Indian firewall device. So now, what I can do is, is open up a web browser, and I've got a Firefox web browser right here, and I'll put the IP address in here, but I'm going to contact the Indian firewall device is going to need to do this on HTTPS. So we're going to use secure protocol colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.0.15. And this is important. We're also going to need to put in another colon here and put the port number that we're going to connect to the Indian firewall device on. And it's going to be port 10443. Once you have this set up, https colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.0.15 colon 10443, hit enter, and we've contacted the device. We're going to have to accept the security certificate, so I'm going to click I understand the risks. I'm going to add an exception and confirm the security exception to accept the self-signed security certificate coming from the Indian firewall device. Okay, and we're met with the initial screen for the initial configuration wizard for the Indian Firewall device. And it tells us, welcome to Indian Firewall. Thank you for choosing the product. And we're just going to click through and go step by step through the configuration. So I'll click the first button. And I'm going to select my language, English, my time zone.
And this is a good time to mention that the Endian firewall device uses the network time protocol or NTP protocol to synchronize and maintain accurate time over the internet. I'll hit next. I'll accept the license agreement and hit next. And now I'm presented with a screen with a prompt asking me if I want to restore from a backup. Now, if I have a previous backup that I've created, this is the time where I could import it and restore my Indian Firewall device from the backup. So if I had a backup, what I would do is I would click Yes and hit the Next button. And then from this screen, I can browse through my computer, find my backup, which will be a tar.gz file, and then I can import and restore my Indian Firewall device to its previous configuration. I can exclude the Indian network registration process and then re-register my device once it's been fully restored. Or, if I uncheck this, the registration information will also be restored. Now, the backups that you can do through the Indian Firewall device will back up all of your configurations. You can also back up all of your log files, your archive log files, and you can back up all of your database files that the Indian Firewall device keeps as well. In this case, I don't have a backup. I'm doing a configuration from scratch. So I'm going to hit back and I'll refresh the window and I'll change the prompt to no because I'm going to do an initial configuration for the first time. So we'll click Next. And in this screen, I have to set up the passwords for the Endian Firewall device. Now there's two passwords I need to set up here. The admin password for the web management interface, and that's the interface that I'm using right now, the web management tool. But also, I need to set up the root password for the SSH interface, a command line interface in which you can use to also configure the Indian Firewall device. So I'll put in my passwords. And hit next. Okay, and now we're presented with the network setup wizard. And this will be an eight step process. And in step one, we need to choose the internet connection type for our WAN interface. And we're presented with some choices here. Now, if we have a static IP address from, let's say, uh, our internet service provider, or if there is another edge router on the network and we have a static IP address for this router, we would choose Ethernet static. If we're going to be given an IP address automatically over Ethernet, which is what we're going to be doing here, then we'll choose Ethernet DHCP. You can also see that there's some other choices here. PPP over Ethernet, let's say if you have a DSL modem. If you have an ADSL modem, an ISDN connection. Let's say you have a modem that's a wireless modem functioning from a SIM card getting cellular internet connection to the device. You would choose analog UMTS modem. Or, if there's another gateway on the network and we don't want the Indian firewall device to act as the gateway, then we'd choose gateway. Now, I'm going to, in this case, use Ethernet DHCP because I have a router that I'm connected to behind me that's posing as my ISP, my internet service provider, and it's going to give us an IP address automatically. So I'll choose that and hit next. And now we need to choose what other network zones we're going to set up besides the green zone and the red zone. Do we want to set up an orange zone for a DMZ and a blue zone for our wireless clients? In this case, we're going to set up both of those. So I'm going to choose orange and blue. And I'll hit next. And now we need to set up our network preferences. We need to set up our IP addressing schemes for our green zone our orange zone, and also our blue zone. As you can see, the green is already set up for us. The IP address of the Indian Firewall device is, by default, 192.168.0.15 with a 24-bit subnet mask, 255.255.255.0. If we wanted to set up some additional IP addresses, we could put them here. 
Also, if we wanted another switch port to be part of this green zone, we could activate it here. Now, in this case, we're going to leave this alone because switch port 1 has been selected. You can see it's recognized as green. The link is active. You can see the MAC address and the device ID. Switch port 1 is LAN 1 on the Endian firewall device. So I'm going to scroll down to the orange zone and think about the IP addressing that I want to set up for my orange and blue zones. Now if I go back to the diagram just briefly, we can bring up the next image in the diagram and you can see that this is what we're needing to set up right now. The IP addressing schemes for the blue zone connected to switch port 2 and the orange zone connected to switch port 3. So in this dialog box for the orange zone we're going to connect to switch port 3 and for the blue zone we're going to connect to switch port 2 and now what about our IP addresses? Now this is where you need to know a little bit about how IP addressing functions and private network addresses. Now I have a document here that shows the different private address ranges that are acceptable according to RFC 1918. The private IP version 4 address ranges are the 10 network from 10.0.0.0 all the way to 10.255.255.255 and the typical subnet mask to mask this range of addresses is 255.0.0.0. There's also a 172.16 private address range and the 192.168 0.0 private address range all the way up to 192.168.255.255. Now, if we decide to use a class C subnet mask or a 255.255.255 subnet mask, then we can set up separate networks in the 192.168 address range. In other words, with this subnet mask here, we could have a 192.168.0 network. We could also have a 192.168.1 network, a 192.168.2 network, a 3 network, and so forth. So we can create multiple private networks to use for these different interfaces. So if we look at the diagram, I've chosen to set up a 192.168.2 network for the blue zone, for the wireless zone, and I'm going to make sure that the Endian firewall device, in this case, is 192.168.2.1. And for the orange zone, I've chosen a 192.168.4 network address scheme, and the Endian firewall device will be 192.168.4.1. Now, you can come up with your own private network address schemes for the different networks that you're going to need to set up. It's up to you. All right, so I'll go here and I'll put these addresses in. So our orange zone will be 192.168.4.1 with a slash 24 subnet mask. And the blue zone, 192.168.2.1, also with a slash 24 subnet mask. Notice that the orange zone is going to connect on switch port 3, LAN 3, and the blue network zone is going to connect on switch port 2, LAN 2. Down at the bottom, I can set up a host name for my network device, my Endian firewall device. This will be the name of the firewall device. So we'll say host EFW, let's say. For the domain name, you would put your domain.com, let's say. All right, I'll hit next. And as you can see, the green, the blue, and the orange zone were all recognized on ports 1, 2, and 3 on the Indian firewall device. The links are active. You can see the MAC addresses here and the device IDs, LAN 1, LAN 2, and LAN 3. Now for our red zone. Now our red zone is for our WAN connection. This is the, the ISP side or the outside of our network. And we need to connect that to switch port 5 on the Endian firewall device. Notice the device IDs, LAN 1, LAN 2, LAN 3, LAN 4, and switch port 5 is Ethernet 1. Switch port 5 is the port that you want to connect for your WAN connection. Now, if you want to, you could put in 
specialized MTU size or maximum transmission unit, but it's best to probably not mess with this or change this from its default. By default, the MTU is 1500, and you're probably not going to need to change that. Let's say your internet service provider requires that you only use one MAC address, and you've just changed your router to the Endian firewall device, and they, don't, they want you to use the same MAC address, well then you could spoof the MAC address with whatever the ISP wants you to have. For DNS, we can choose automatic or manual. If we choose manual and hit next, then we need to provide our own DNS servers and we could put those in here. Now you have two options. Now if you're going to use the same DNS server, then you need to put that IP address in the same IP address twice. So if you're only going to use one DNS server, put the IP address in here twice. Now in this case, I'm going to hit back and I'm not going to change my maximum transmission unit and I'm not going to spoof my MAC address. And for my DNS settings, I'm going to choose automatic because I'm counting on my ISP to automatically give me DNS server information. So I'll hit next and configure DNS resolver, step 5 of 8, DNS automatic, we'll just hit next. And now it's time to set up our email account for admin email address. Now this is an important part of the initial configuration. Let's say you have a situation in which your Indian firewall device has a notification of an interface going down or a service being disrupted or something like that, the Indian firewall device can send you a notification to your admin email account. So I would put in here, let's say, admin at my company, let's say, dot com email address. And I'll put in for the sender email address so I know that it's coming from my Endian firewall device, I'll put Endian at mycompany.com. And for the address of the smart host, this is going to be, the smart host is the mail server you want this notification email sent to. So in this case, I'm going to send it to my MX server, my mail server, MX dot, let's say, my company dot com, right? Okay, I'll hit next. Congratulations. The network setup is done. All we need to do is click OK to apply the new configuration. Now, when I apply this configuration, we're going to be setting the passwords for the device, and we might be momentarily disconnected from the Indian firewall device, and we might have to reconnect to the device, meaning we might have to put in our admin username and password and we may need to re-accept the security certificate. So I'll click OK and apply the configuration. And as you can see, it tells me that the services are being restarted. It could take up to 20 seconds. And we'll just wait 20 seconds and see what happens.